we've never had no. the, had a problem going unscripted, have no, we? No, no. That was kind of the whole four o'clock show, producers wasn't it? Want us to shut up most of the time? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> People at home have no idea that you and I. We just talk and we talk and we talk, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the red light comes on and we realize yeah. we have to do some work. Right. It's like, oh, now we have to talk with purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and we're good at that. Talking about I think so. kind of nothing. <laughs> right. In the very beginning, when you showed up at KSAT, it was really neat because no matter what was going on around you or how much we were laughing during the commercials or whatever, mm -hmm. man, when that light comes on, you're on it. Yeah, I kind of get in the zone. Yeah. And, you know, everybody tries to tease you or distract you at the weather wall, and I honestly, I don't see anything. I just, you know, when I'm doing the weather, I'm in the zone, I'm going to tell the forecast, and then once the red light's off, then all of a sudden I'm there to play. Mm-hmm. You're good at it. Thanks. For a girl. Do you hear for that a lot? For a girl. Do you hear that a lot? Because that really bothers me that for some reason it's what you do, mm -hmm. the meteorology world, People are used to seeing weather girls, but right. not treat them like meteorologists, which is what you are. Yes. Well, you know, there's a big stigma over the whole term weather girl. It doesn't really bother me. It was kind of a nickname growing up. My family called me that because I was so into the weather. So it doesn't bother me when you call me weather girl. It's just knowing that I'm more than a weather girl because I do have my degree in meteorology. And trust me, it was not easy to get. So, you know, you go through four years of calculus and physics and thermodynamics. All the things that a lot of girls are not encouraged to do. Right, I and mind. I think they should be. I, you know, I go to schools all the time and I talk to kids about, you know, yes, it is a lot of math and science, but you don't have to like it. You just have to be able to do it. Sometimes we'll bump heads over what we think the forecast is. And then the funny part is, you know, you forecast for tomorrow and then once tomorrow happens, whoever's right, we're definitely going to go and say, I told you so. Oh, y'all are like that? Oh, yeah. You can have some chocolate. All right. Because that's a girl thing. Okay. And let's do some girl talk. Pick a okay. subject. So we're Any just subject. One. All right. Oh, nice. Spanx. Yes, yeah, Spanx. Do you yeah. wear Spanx? I do wear Spanx. I, I do. wear Spanx too. Do you know, I'm actually wearing, do you know they make Spanx leggings and pantyhose now? No, I did not know that. And bras. Really? And they make man Spanx. They do make man Spanx, and so they give us a hard time for wearing Spanx, but I know some men that might benefit from wearing man Spanx. They're just undershirts. They're just tight undershirts. Yes, now they do and suck they you suck in. suck you in. Mm -hmm. We are not helpless guys. <laughs> that one was put in there by one of our viewers, okay. uh, one of our Facebook friends, and that's what she wanted to know. She was like, why do guys always feel like we're helpless? Most people don't know this, you know, I love cars, especially yes. Mustangs. I was actually taught to drive a stick shift with the vice president of Shelby Automobiles. Wow. So You're I think girl. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty good at driving a stick shift now. Yeah. Well, so, why do you think guys think we're helpless? I think they want us to be helpless because it makes them feel needed. Because, mm. I mean, you know, you've been married, I'm married. There are times when you let your husband think that you need him to do things. I've never done that before. To make, oh, I'll admit it, I've done it. You've done it? You yeah. pretend to be helpless? Yeah, there's been, well, I don't know that I pretend to be helpless. It's just things that it's like, you know what, I could do it, I don't really want to, so I'm just gonna ask him to do it and, you know, be the, oh, honey, could you please do this for me? It just makes them feel good about themselves. Very smart. Mm -hmm. This says, you should know. That one came from Adam Kasky. Men do not have ESP. <laughs> they Quit have ESPN. Yeah. They have ESPN, <laughs> but they don't have ESP. Right. Quit expecting it to happen. Yeah. Right. And you know, I think that's some good advice for marriages too. I remember my mom telling me that when I first got married, saying, you know what? They're not mind readers. Don't expect them to be. Sometimes they're way less. Just tell them what you want. Tell them why you're upset. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Shoes. <laughs> I had someone on my Facebook page ask me that you and I should divulge how many shoes we have in oh, our closet. No, I don't even think I could count them. Mm -mm. I mean, I would literally have to go into my closet and count storage. them. Oh, see? That's how many I have. Yeah. Well, here's my thought. There is nothing in the world that makes me feel better about going to work than going to work in a new pair of shoes. Yeah. 
It, it really, it it's does. It's a pick-me-upper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because shoes make you feel different. Like, shoes can make you feel, like, beautiful or even sexy. So it just, it depends on the type of shoe. All put together, mm -hmm. confident. Yeah, and I think different shoes can make different outfits. Because you could and wear a different pair of shoes with the, the same outfit and feel differently. Mm-hmm. And then new shoes and Spanx. Wow, you put it out the ballpark. There you go. <laughs> you are a, such a shoe girl. I am. P cats versus dogs. We have Ranger, and yes, he's named after the baseball team, the Texas Rangers. So now I'm thinking we need another one named Astro. Oh, that would be cute. I think so, but so far I have not convinced him to buy me another dog. We have two dogs at home. We had two dogs and a cat for a while. I think he was feeling like it's a little bit of a full house. Well, you know, there's also the possibility that you guys are going to start a family with human beings as opposed to mini dogs. <laughs> that's true. And that's going to fill up the house even faster. <laughs> right. And I don't think you're going to name your firstborn Astro. No, probably not. No. Your husband went, just finished up his first football season as yes. coaching. Yes. I am I'm getting over the whole football widow thing. He loves it. So as much as I get upset when he's not home all the time, when I go to one of his games and see him talking to the kids and encouraging the kids and really getting excited for the kids in their game, it just puts a smile on my face. He loves doing it so much. He's going to make a good daddy. I hope so. Someday. <laughs> Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> my mom reminds me sometimes of, you know, when I was your age, I had a 14-year-old. And the idea of me having a 14-year-old right now is so scary. <laughs> For me and the 14-year-old. <laughs> well, you did great. Um, here. Oh, I you still have this one. I am I'm here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. No problem.